Blackboard Wi-Fi extender. Uh, so in my previous video, we had demonstrated the um, physical device and how do you connect it and the pluses and minuses of uh, using the extender to uh, provide Wi-Fi connectivity inside your vessel. And uh, now we're going to show you how the user interface works and how to actually make that happen. So, as stated in my previous video, uh, we Wi-Fi connect to the optimizer. Uh, I have my computer here, and uh, we do that by going, this is a Mac, uh, on Windows PC would be very similar. Uh, on this particular, this particular optimizer has an SSID of WXA11293F5. I just select it and then Wi-Fi connect to it. Once I'm Wi-Fi connected to the optimizer, I need to, um, I need to tell it that I want to use the extender to uh, connect to a Marina Wi-Fi. So um, the first thing I do is I actually connect, open up a browser, and connect to the optimizer. And I do this by entering the IP address 192.168.10.1 as described in the quick start guide that comes with the optimizer. I then log in. The default username is admin with a password of WebX access. And uh, once we've entered that username and that password, we get to the home page on the optimizer. And we see here a section called Wi-Fi Extender Setup. Now, the Wi-Fi Extender Setup only shows up if the Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi Extender is plugged into the LAN port of the optimizer. If the extender is powered off, or if it's disconnected from the optimizer, of course that section will not show up because the optimizer itself will not have connectivity to the extender itself. So there are three steps involved in getting connected to the internet uh, through the Wi-Fi extender. The first one involves connecting to the external Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, the second one then is to enable data to be transferred to it, and the third one is to manage the firewall. So let's go let's go ahead and address the first issue. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell the extender that we want to connect to uh, to the a Wi-Fi access point that might be at a marina. Of course, those access points are, are going to change from location to location, and so you need to know the SSID or the name of the hotspot, and you also need to know the security password for that, which you would uh, receive uh, from the marina management. So I hit the connect button, and uh, once I do that, that transfers me to a page, and we see here that the extender is currently disabled or not associated. Um, and so uh, we'll want to scan to see what SSIDs are available to us. And so I hit the scan button, and in a minute you'll see basically all the different Wi-Fi hotspots that we have here at the GMN office, and um, we get to select one. And so you'll notice that the signal strength is quite strong on most of these. Uh, GMN is the primary hotspot for the office, and I want to connect to that, and so I'll just say join. As soon as I do that, it takes me to a screen that allows me to enter the secret code or the password for the uh, for the uh, 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 network. So I go ahead and enter that. And then I hit submit. Once I hit submit, um, I come to another page which um, basically gives me the signal strength and everything else and allows me to actually change the wireless security. So if I made a mistake entering the password, I can correct it here. And then I hit the save and apply. Once I hit the save and apply, that will tell the extender to connect to that particular um, Wi-Fi hotspot. And you'll see in a minute here that as soon as I do that, the signal strength goes to 100%. So you'll notice that the signal strength is 100% and it gives me the information uh, the signal quality and the speed at which I'm transmitting over that particular connection. Now, if had I entered the Wi-Fi access ID or the uh, password incorrectly, then what would happen here is your signal would bump up between some high value and zero once a second, which tells you that the device is unable to connect uh, and maintain strong signal. If that were the case, then you would go here to wireless security, you would change the password and you would hit save and apply. So we're now connected. Uh, the Wi-Fi extender is now connected and uh, we're, we're ready for use. So next what we do is we hit the home button to get us back to the home screen. So here's a home screen. And uh, we now need to tell the optimizer that it needs to route traffic. So remember the optimizer 
may be connected to a number of different devices. You may have a fleet broadband or an Iridium pilot or a VSAT connected to the WAN port of the optimizer. You may have a 9555, 9575, or an ISAT phone or a Thuraya phone plugged into the USB port. And so um, the optimizer uh, doesn't know which device you want to use, so you have to tell it. And the way you do that is by pushing the enable Wi-Fi extender. As soon as you push that particular button, uh, we need to log back in since my session timed out. Um, as soon as I push that button, um, you will notice that the polarity changes, and now it says disable Wi-Fi extender. Whereas before it said enable Wi-Fi extender, now it says disable Wi-Fi extender. So if I hit the disable Wi-Fi extender, I go back to using my satellite devices. In the case of a fleet broadband or an Iridium pilot, it, all the traffic would be routed to it. In the case of a USB device, it would be routed to it once I did my Xgate session. And by pushing that button again, I now tr transmit the traffic over the Wi-Fi extender. So uh, I can open, open up a browser now or actually bring up Xgate and browse the internet using Xweb, for example. Now, the next step has to do with the firewall. Now, note that by default, the firewall is enabled. This means that all of the traffic on your computer is blocked from the internet. So, for example, iCloud is not going to sync up with your iPhone. Dropbox is not going to sync up with your, with your devices either. Windows updates aren't going to happen. Adobe updates aren't going to happen. Basically, the firewall is blocking all the traffic between the computer and the internet. Now, in a crowded Wi-Fi environment, this is a really good thing because the amount of bandwidth that you have available to you is very limited. And so you don't want to be syncing the cloud information, your iTunes music, for example, over the Wi-Fi link when it's so slow that it can't be used. So you want to protect yourself by blocking the firewall. When the firewall is on, the only traffic that is allowed is Xgate and Xweb. So you get web compression at 3 to 5x performance improvement over other comp Wi-Fi compression, I mean of non-compressed, and you can do email. So you can browse the internet and you can do email. All the other traffic is blocked. And so it, in the case where you have contention, you can use Xgate and Xweb, which are designed for narrowband satellite devices, to optimize the performance of your link and do things or get things done that other people won't get. Now. While I'm here on the subject, let me just bring up Xgate very quickly and show you a trick. Uh, for those of you using Xgate over a, um, a USB-based device, um, if you were to hit Start now in Xgate, uh, what would happen is the optimizer would go ahead and switch you over to the USB and do the data transfer over the USB. Now, of course, you may not want to do that, so I'm going to go to Preferences and show you that under the Connection tab, there is something called Use Another Connection If Already Open. By selecting that setting in Xgate, what happens is when you do a data connection in Xgate, Xgate will see if there's an open internet connection before it'll try to dial your satellite phone. And so with this setting, once I hit the Start button, what'll happen is Xgate will do my session, over the Wi-Fi extender, Xweb, if I were to push the Xweb button, would bring up a browser and allow me to browse the internet with compression over the Wi-Fi extender. So um, this, is, this gives you the ability to use your Wi-Fi satellite tools over your, wi your, your narrowband Wi-Fi connection or your connection with high contention um, to advantage to you in the case of crowded, crowded Wi-Fi's. Now, you may want to do things like sync up your sync up your uh, your iTunes or download or watch a video or do something that requires you to have access to the internet. To do that, you need to disable the firewall. So by pushing the disable firewall button, um, you have now disabled the firewall. At that point, your computer now has full access to the internet, and you can open up a browser. Uh, you can go to Google. Mm. Oh, sorry, I need to spell that correctly, google.com, um, or go to any other web browser uh, using your standard web tools, uh, the internet is totally on. Now, 
for users that are using broadband devices, um, you may want to switch over to your broadband device when you leave the marina Wi-Fi. And you don't you don't want the firewall to be off when you do this, of course, because that will drive bandwidth through your through your through your satellite. So you'll notice that when I disable the Wi-Fi extender, the Wi-Fi the firewall is already by default disabled and turned back on. So that protects you when using your broadband device. If your broadband device is off and you turn it on, what will happen is the optimizer will automatically detect it and switch the firewall on for you. Now, um, it'll also change the state so that traffic will go through your broadband device. Finally, if you reboot the Wi-Fi extender, uh, it'll go ahead and set the default to, to uh, browse through the broadband device or your satellite device with the Wi-Fi disabled. So, all very easy to do. Um, you know, it's three steps right there on the home page of the optimizer. And I will find I find that you will have no pr problems using this particular device to your great advantage. So, thanks for spending time with us. Until next time, this is Lewis.